I'm Kathleen Moore, and today uh, I was able to hear the final results uh, by Dr. Vicki Mocker of the open label uh, single arm phase two study that combines uh, the um, uh, anti PD1 pembrolizumab with uh, the tyrosine kinase inhibitor Limvatinib or Limvima in the treatment of women with recurrent endometrial cancer. So this is a study that's been presented uh, as an interim analysis and actually published already as an interim analysis because the results were so provocative they really couldn't wait for the end of the study. But now this is the final analysis of the entire cohort that was presented uh, today. Uh, and what this study is, is it's a um, combination immunotherapy and tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It enrolled women with endometrial cancer who had all had prior paclitaxel and carboplatin, which would be the standard of care. And so now they're coming into what we would call second line therapy for which there's no approved agents. Uh, and as we all know, um, it's an area of high unmet need. These patients have really no effective options other than pembrolizumab uh, if you have microsatellite uh, in unstable tumors, where you actually have a fairly high expectation that it will work. And so that was a wonderful thing for the 20% of patients who are MSI high. For the rest of the patients, they're sort of been stuck without any effective agents. And this, um, this regimen really actually looks to be a very exciting addition to our armamentarium. Uh, the data that was presented today was inclusive of both microsatellite stable and microsatellite high, but the vast majority of patients were microsatellite stable, and that's important because what we're seeing with this combination is a response rate that was about 40%. And to give you a comparison, um, in any phase three study in this setting, the control arm response rates have been about 10 to 15 percent with a duration of response of four months. Limvatin and pembrolizumab, as presented today, has a response rate that's just under 40 percent with median response rates that were about a year. Uh, so just sort of a um, paradigm shifting difference in an expected outcome. Uh, and that really led to, on September 17th, the um, FDA simultaneous US, Canadian, Australian approval of this doublet in a recurrent endometrial setting because, quite frankly, the, the clinical benefit is so high. So that's incredibly exciting for our patients and, and Dr. Mocker presented that nicely today. She also presented the side effect um, profile, which is not insignificant. And so really is something as a membership, we're going to have to be educated on and communicate really so we can use this regimen to its best effect and safely. Uh, uh, the combination does have significant toxicities that she presented, um, high rates of hypertension, uh, fatigue, diarrhea, um, um, uh, endocrine mainly, um, hyperhypothyroidism. So there's quite a bit of nuance to how it's dosed, dose modifications and dose interruptions that we're gonna have to pay attention to. But I feel very confident that uh, we can learn new things as a society and learn how to use this combination safely uh, and get it to our patients so that they can benefit. I mean, it's another year of life for our patients who otherwise didn't have options, that's an incredible advance uh, for our patients and for our field and um, I think more good things to come from that.